Good morning. It's another beautiful day here in Southwest Colorado. And of course, this is the time of year we have to start worrying about taking care of our root crops that we harvested from our gardens this summer. I had hoped to build a big root cellar this summer, but with other projects I had going on, it just didn't happen. So I had to come up with an alternative and I scratched my head a little bit and thought, well, I need something that'll sit down in the ground to try to keep whatever goes in there at a constant temperature. And I also needed something that would keep it fairly weatherproof, but would also be ventilated. So I came up with the idea of using old refrigerators to bury, to use as a pseudo root cellar. I looked online and actually saw that a couple other people had done it too, so I thought I'd give it a try. Today I thought I'd show you how it turned out and talk a little bit about what I've found out so far. I finished it about a month ago and it was still pretty warm then. And of course, the summer isn't the time that I worry about having things in the root cellar because everything that I try to preserve in there is pretty much what I'm gonna to try to keep through the winter. But I did find out that during the course of the summer, things in the ground stayed about 20 to 25 degrees cooler than stuff I was storing in the barn or in the garage. So that gives me some hope that once I actually get these insulated on top, that they will keep warm enough through the winter not to freeze. This is one of the pseudo root cellars that I have. It's actually a chest freezer that I got at the local appliance store. They were thrilled to get rid of it. It didn't work and they just evacuated the Freon out of it and gave it to me. So just to give you a closer look, under that cover I put some foam insulation. And you can see there's the lid to the chest freezer. And I'll lift it up and you can see I have two crates in there that have potatoes inside the sawdust. And there's some more potatoes that I use, I hope to use for seed potatoes next year, as well as some carrots. Down in the bottom, you can see that I have some sand that I've put some moisture in to help keep the humidity up. And then I put a couple boards on top of it so I could have some space between the bottom of the crates that I put in there and the actual sand itself. I don't know if you can see the thermometer, but it says it's about 43 degrees in there. And this morning early, it was in the low 20s out. Right now, it's about 57 degrees. Right now, this seems to be staying at a pretty constant 42 to 44 degrees. So again, once I get the top insulated so the real cold from this winter doesn't get into the freezer from the top, I'm hoping it will keep stuff at a fairly constant temperature. Here's my other refrigerator freezer that I picked up at the same time. Having these refrigerator freezers and freezers uh, gives me three separate storage areas. You can't combine things like apples and peaches with root crops because the apples give off um, exhaust a gas that will actually break down the potatoes and the root crops. So you need to keep them separate. So I have the small section up there, which is the freezer of the refrigerator freezer. And then I have this bigger section as well as the chest freezer that is pretty much just all one unit. So in here, I have my spaghetti squash as well as the dahlia tubers that I got from the dahlias that I grew this summer. I'll close these up now so I can start getting ready to put the straw on that I'm going to use for insulation for the winter. One of the things I want to point out is that these need ventilation just like a regular root cellar. And you can see the pipe, one of the pipes coming up there. You need one ventilation pipe going in down low and then you need another one coming out high. And that helps the air movement uh, flow through these to keep uh, toxic gases from building up. 
So it's time to get these things closed up so I can start getting them insulated for the winter. It took about five or four and a half small bales of straw to cover what I have here about a foot and a half deep. I'm hoping that'll be enough to get it through the winter and keep it insulated enough so things don't freeze. Last winter I just had things in the barn and I know it got down below freezing in there. I had it in sawdust, the potatoes in sawdust, and most of them didn't freeze except the ones right around the very edge. Uh, so I'm hoping with the protection I've got here, plus having them in the ground, that they'll be okay until next spring. We're going to be leaving for Arizona down in, I'm going to spend the winter down in the desert in a couple weeks. So I don't plan on having to get in here all winter. Obviously, if this was something that you needed to get into during the winter, this method of insulating, it wouldn't be very practical. It'd be a pain to have to take the straw off every time you wanted to get in and then put it back on and recover it. But for my purposes, I think this will work okay. I'm going to put a tarp over this now to help keep the moisture out of things so the, the straw keeps insulating well. And we'll see how that goes. Well, as you can see, I finished putting the tarp on the root cellar. I did have to cut a few slits in the tarp so the vents could come through. But then I just put duct tape over those slits. So that should help keep it pretty much weather tight through the winter. Hopefully with the straw added to it that'll help insulate it and the things in there won't freeze this winter next spring i'll get a chance to find out and i'll let you know so for now that's it from the family acres hope you have a good day